Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining in today. I'm Hugues de Vallon. I'm a software engineer at ARM, and I will be presenting Parsec, the platform association for security, and also its involvement in the larger Rust community. So let's get started. First, let's see why, why Parsec. So the, the edge in between the cloud and the IoT endpoints is becoming a, a richer compute capable world. At the edge, you, you would want to, to execute richer workloads, for example, for machine learning or sensor data analysis. Uh, similarly, than in the cloud, the edge is a, is a multi-tenant environment where multiple applications could be accessing the same device. And similarly, then in the cloud, you would want in the edge to have access to the various cloud native development tools. But very differently from the cloud, um, the threat landscape is totally different. You would have new, new threats in the edge than, than in the cloud. Um, the, the platforms are also very diverse. Um, and specifically, um, the, the root of, of trust that they have, so the, the, the the hardware-backed security modules present on those platforms can be very diverse. You could have trusted platform modules, hardware security modules, and secure elements. So there is a, a conflict there uh, between, on one side, having applications that are highly secure, um, that store their keys in real hardware uh, in those uh, uh, root of trust modules, and that are also easily deployed. And on the other side, this, uh, this, this big landscape of, of, of different platforms and different uh, um, device and different hardware-backed security devices. So, so Parsec is made to, 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 to solve that problem. Parsec provides a uniform compatibility layer across the diverse world of, of edge. Parsec makes the connection in between cloud native applications that are written in any programming language and between the, the device that can be any platform on any architecture and working with any, any, any hardware. So they could be trusted platform modules, hardware security modules, trusted execution environment services, and, and, and other hardware-backed security modules. So Parsec is making these connections so that cloud native development is possible at the edge. Secure cognitive uh, development is possible at the edge. So let's see on a, on a conceptual view, uh, Parsec API is rooted in platform security architecture, PSA. And uh, specifically, uh, Parsec uses uh, the PSA cryptography API, which is providing key storage and a lot of um, different cryptography operations like, uh, for example, asymmetric signing, symmetric signing, and, and many more. Parsec is a service, a service that is available to um, clients in a, in a rich OS. So it's a, it's, a, it's a user space daemon, which is not uh, accessed through um, one specific language. Um, Parsec is, has, has, has developed its own wire protocol, which is language ag agnostic. And on top of which, uh, client libraries can be can be developed so client libraries in a, in a lot of different programming language that can that know how to communicate with the IPC protocol in a convenient way for for developers so that accessing in a in a in a rich workload um, the hardware hardware backed security modules is easy so let's see in more detail what is the the service architecture there so the parsec service is architect uh, is, is made around the front end and back end architecture. So on the front end, you have the listener, which is the component responsible for taking in the requests of all the, the clients on your system. So the listener is, is, uh, knows the, the, the wire protocol and, uh, and pass the request um, deeper in the service. Um, so that access control is performed in between the, the different tenants. And the requests are passed on the specific providers that needs to, to respond to the request. And the provider is the backend of the, the service. It is the, 
the part where that knows that has the, the hardware specific knowledge on how to communicate with the, the root of trust. And on, and on the left, on the other side of the IPC, um, there is the, the cloud native application, which is using the Parsec client library to, um, to be totally platform agnostic and, and, and that will work on, 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 uh, on any platform. So anywhere that this application is deployed, anywhere that there is a Parsec service, it, it will work and will not need to be reconfigured. As, as it was previously, uh, if this application wanted to use a, a TPM or HSM, it would have to, to change its, its API calls. But with Parsec, it, it doesn't have to. And I've talked about client libraries. Um, there are client libraries uh, ergonomics, uh, depending on what is the, 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 the use case. So there is different layers. Um, the, the first layer, the, the client library core, is for sophisticated use case with granular control. And that's the layer where uh, all operations with all parameters are available. So that's the most complicated layer because uh, one developer would have to, to set the specific parameters for, for each call. But there is a high level for specific use case, um, which where, 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 where the client library make makes the, 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 the choices for you with a small defaulting or capability profiling where parameters are already set, basically. And I'll show in an example uh, layer, uh, letter, uh, what the, the client library call looks like for the, for the, for the clients. Well, Multi-tenancy is, is a obviously an important part, part of this. So cloud native workload, Delivery at the edge is expected to be multi-tenant. Multiple applications will share access to the secure hardware on the platform. Each application needs a unique and persistent identity, which is assigned by a component that Parsec can trust. The Parsec service treats each API call according to the identity of the application that made a call, partitions key stores, and brokers access to hardware based on the identity. The source of the identity depends on the deployment. It might be a container runtime manager, for example. A deployed system requires an identity provider, a separate component that assigns identities to applications, which has a trust relationship with the Parsec service. Let's, let's see, let's see how, how, how it works in, in practice. So in your typical system, you would have the Parsec service sitting on top of the hardware back security modules and applications making calls to the Parsec service. S separately from the Parsec service, there is the identity provider, which roles is to give to each application on your system their specific identity. This identity is given on their request to the Parsec service. So whenever an application wants to make a call to the Parsec service, for example, to, to generate a key pair or to use a, a key to encrypt some data, the application has to give its identity to the Parsec service. And the Parsec service with that identity will perform a key store partitioning so that one application cannot access the key of another one. But of course, Parsec needs to, to trust uh, that identity and needs to verify it so that the, the authenticity of of each of those identity identities is respected. So there needs to be a trust relationship in between Parsec and the identity provider. For example, uh, one, one identity provider that we currently have in Parsec is um, using Unix user ID. So in that, in that uh, with that identity provider, the applications when making calls to Parsec give their, um, their UID to Parsec. And to verify it, Parsec uses um, a feature on Unix domain socket called the peer, 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 peer credentials to make sure that um, the UID given in the request match the actual UID of the process which is on the other end of the Unix domain socket. And if they match, uh, Parsec is sure that the application is, is indeed the one that uh, it says it is and can use that UID as identity to partition the key store. Another identity that we use 
in Parsec is the is the Spiffy ID, and uh, using a Spire as a Spiffy implementation, for example, the, the application fetch their 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 Spiffy ID, and uh, what they actually fetch is the is the JOT SVID token. Um, using the, the, the Spiffy workload API. They give this token to Parsec, and Parsec uses the workload API as well to verify it and make sure that um, that, um, that that this token is valid and uses the Spiffy ID as the pass, as the, the application identity to partition the key store. So this is two examples of authenticators, um, one coming from UID, from the operating system, and the other one coming from Spiffy. But many more are possible, um, and more generally in Parsec, there is a um, a pluggable architecture where all the different parts can be can be changed. So um, other identity providers are, are perfectly possible, depending on um, depending on the on the deployment of of Parsec. <clears throat> so ultimately. Uh, to use Parsec, you need a client library uh, written in the in the language that, that you want. And what we have currently, um, we have support for uh, a Rust client library. Uh, we have support for a Go client library, a C client library, which is a uh, which is made possible through Embed Crypto, and we also have a CLI tool to access Parsec. So each of those are our ways for for. Your, your your workloads to, to access the Parsec service. And let's see let's see how uh, uh, an actual example of, of the of the Rust client library looks like. So as I, as I told before, this is the this is the the the, the core library level. So the so the layer where uh, all the parameters are to be defined by the column. So not the easiest layer, but still as you can see all this code, which is like around 25 lines, is enough to uh, um, to instantiate a, a Parsec client, generate a key pair, sign a hash, and export a public key. So it's not actually it's, it's not it's not that much. Um, so if you if you focus on the four last lines, we we actually do perform the the actual calls where we uh, create a basic basic clients. Which is the, the the name of the Rust client? We generate a key pair, uh, and it, that is using the PSA crypto as 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 an API, as as I told before. So when generating a key pair, you have to give uh, key attributes, and in that case, we say that uh, the key that we are going to generate <coughs> is a ECC key pair. Uh, we give its uh, its curve family and the specific curve that it's going to use, and also we give a, a policy uh, where we say that. Um, uh, with this key, you 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 will only be allowed to to sign hash and nothing else. So you can't uh, export it, for example, and you can only use uh, an uh, an algorithm that we that we specify. And in this case, is ECGSA with uh, SHA two five six. Um, then on the on the on the other line, we 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 sign a, a small text with it and this specific algorithm, and then we export the the public key. So if Two, two other things to, to notice in that snippet of code is that the key names are, are referenced using uh, UTF-8 strings. So as you can see, you can put uh, emojis in it, which is which can be nice. Um, and also to to actually instantiate a, a, a client. So there is just one uh, one new uh, method here. But what happens in the in the background is actually a, a very much more complicated than that. Is that when creating this client, this client will actually use the default Parsec provider and the default Parsec authenticator on the system. And when I mean default, is that it's the default that has been set by uh, by the Parsec administrator when setting up Parsec on the system. <clears throat> so this code, uh, these few lines of code, anywhere they are they are deployed, they they will work, um, and they will work. On the default 
a provider and, and the default authenticator that Parsec is working with. So if uh, Parsec uh, is deployed with a TPM, those, this will work with a TPM. And if Parsec is working with a HSM, this will work with an HSM. But this code does not have to change. And that's the big value proposition of Parsec. That's the, the cloud native uh, way. So I, I've shown the, the Rust client. Let's see the exact same um, same code. So the, the exact same, same operations, but using the Parsec tool, which is the, the CLI client. And in the exact same way here, we have a, we have commands to, to create an ECC key. Uh, we have another command to sign. And then we export the public key here. And in the exact same way, uh, this is using the default provider and the default uh, authenticator on the system. Uh, of course, it's if, if Parsec is, is deployed um, on a system where, where, where there is both uh, a TPM, an HSM and uh, uh, a trusted service. It's possible to choose like uh, in the in the code the specific one that you want. But by default and using the simple commands, it will use the the default one, um, which is often the only one that that Parsec is deployed with. So yeah, that was it for the for the Parsec part of the presentation. Uh, I'll, I'll, I also wanted to to present what's our involvement in the in the larger Rust community. So what what do we do for the Rust community? So as I as I told before, Parsec is uh, heavily relies on the different um, root of trust, so on the different hardware backed security modules and um, that we that, that we use. And instead of uh, developing the code uh, inside the inside the the the, the Parsec code source, we, we decided to to publish uh, in, independent crates for, for, for each of them. So for example, for the TPM, uh, we have a TSS uh, ES API crate, which is, imp which is a, a wrapper uh, around the enhanced system API to communicate with TPMs. For HSM, we have the CryptoKey crate, with, which is a wrapper around the PKCS11 API. And for um, the trusted service provider, we have, a, um, and that's used in Parsec as well, we have the PSA crypto crate, a wrapper around the PSA uh, crypto C API. And all of those crates are rebuilt in a similar way because they are, as, as, as in they're all safe abstraction over C APIs. So they are really using uh, um, Rust idioms and Rust idiomatic codes to make sure that um, that what is exported in Rust is always safe, uh, memory safe and thread safe, so that uh, they are actually yeah, <clears throat> really nice to use. And um, even for someone that has no, no interest at all in, in Parsec and just wants to use uh, the TPM, HSM uh, in Rust, uh, those are, are really nice to do so. Um, and yeah, many people are using them uh, yeah, in, totally independently for, from Parsec. So, so that's 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 really great to to see to see uh, engagement from the community uh, just for for those specific parts. And so other than the crate that we that we um, that we ship, uh, we also contributed to to other um, Rust projects. So for Bindgen, for example, we we, we added a support for dynamic loading in Bindgen itself. So using the lib, lib loading crate. So that Bindgen is capable of generating a structure uh, which creates a, a, a lib loading context. So that, for example, you can see here, and that's what we use in the crypto key um, sys crate, is that it generates this PKCS11 structure in this specific case because it's been given the PKCS11 C API header file. And so that at runtime, we, we just have to give him the, the path of the dynamic library and it will um, automatically create the, the lib loading structure. So that's really useful for, for rest abstraction of, um, of uh, API and libraries that are meant to be, uh, to be loaded at runtime. We added the peer credential support for Unix domain sockets. Um, and that's currently available in nightly Rust uh, with the, the peer cred method that, that, that is to be executed on the Unix stream. And that method uh, actually returns the UID and the, the group ID of the process that is on the other side of the, of the, of the socket. And that's mainly uh, what we use in the, 
in the parsec authenticator to make sure to to check that the UID uh, match the client that is that is calling parsec. And also we added a, a basic uh, uh, JOT SVID uh, token API support in in Rust Spiffy, and that's what we use in our Spiffy based authenticator. So yeah, so that's it for 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 for, for this presentation. Uh, thanks a lot for for listening to it. Um, you can check uh, the code of Parsec and the code of the different crates that I presented in in the Prolax second GitHub organization. If you're interested in Parsec, uh, make sure to, to check out our book. It actually contains a, a quick a quick start guide um, if you're running a, a Linux and x86 to 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 really uh, get you started quickly um, and uh, try, trying the 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 actually trying the, the CLI Parsec tool uh, quickly. We are on the CNCF Slack workspace on the Parsec channel. If you have any questions at all, uh, really yeah, feel free to to chat with us. And we have a weekly community call as well uh, on Tuesdays, uh, where where you can where you can also join and, and chat with, uh, with us. So if if you have any question, I'll, I'll I'll be really happy to 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 answer. And uh, yeah, otherwise, uh, th thanks a lot for listening to me today. Thanks. <laughs>